Welcome to Coffee and Gumbo, where we talk about all things hot, spicy, and flavorful. Hello, Coffee and Gumbo family. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Well, guys, we are back with another episode of the Coffee and Gumbo podcast. And as you can tell, we are coming to you from a different location this week. We are in the Big D, Dallas. Big D. We are here for a couple of reasons, one being my wonderful co-host birthday stacy happy birthday to you happy birthday to ya happy birthday yes all right secondly we are here to have a awesome awesome podcast we are revisiting one of our topics which is our a step in my shoes if you remember our previous one we were talking about guilty pleasures this one we're going to talk about the single ladies. And we have two wonderful guests with us today that are going to help us to talk about this wonderful subject. As you know, we try to bring you that spicy, flavorful, hot conversation. So I would love to welcome today to the podcast. We have Derek. And the ninja. Hey, both of these people, you know, are very near and dear to me because I've known Derek for a while. Derek is my frat and he is awesome. And Denisha is my longtime friend. So, you know, as part of my birthday, they have agreed to come on with us today. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Yes, you were voluntold. Voluntold. Voluntold, that is right, but we appreciate the both of you. Yes. And we are looking forward to talking about this subject and getting your perspectives. We have a lot of questions we want to throw out there at you guys. So, everybody, let's buckle up because this topic could go a lot of different ways. Either way, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm ready to see what this go, where this go. Okay. Yes, yes. We want to get a male perspective and we also want to get that female perspective on some of these questions so yes. coffee and gumbo y'all know how we do we bring the heat so everybody <laughs> buckle up get you some coffee and some gumbo and let's get to it <laughs> all right i would love to just stop though and, and give you each a chance just to quickly introduce yourselves Tell the Coffee and Gummo family what you want to share, and then we're going to get right into the questions. So, Derek, let's start with you. Start with me. Okay. Uh, so, hey, Coffee and Gumbo family. Uh, my name is Derek Brown. Uh, I am a friend of Stacy's and longtime friend, and we do have a fraternal and sorority connection. Yes. And uh, so I'm glad to be able to support. Uh, I don't know. I Just a little bit about me. I'm, I'm a family guy father of four girls. My tagline is girl dad. All right. Uh, so uh, I definitely have a little bit of uh, information that I will share in terms of what I tell them and probably what I would tell most women in terms of the single life and dating. Thank you. Oh, all right. All right. All right, Ms. Valentold. Donisha. Hi, Coffee and Gumbo fam. My name is Donisha Winston. I am a mother of one son and I am a teacher well, it's all right. great all right cool, Stacey so, you know I get caught up I'm gonna have to really catch myself from being more of a spectator and remember I'm the host so just remind me from time to time because you know when they say something good I get all excited <laughs> it is what it is exactly. hey. you know, we can try man. that's right now what? Yeah. okay y'all ready for the first question you ready let's do it okay so Stacey why don't you set us up with the chapter on all the single ladies give give us a, a hint as to where we where you went with this in the book what was your concept of how this chapter was in the book well you know according to research um 
the population, uh, the ratio of men to women is um, at least about four to one. And so um, there are a lot of single ladies out there. So I just kind of want to touch on that just to find out, you know, why? I mean, I don't, why are there so many single ladies out there? Are, are the single ladies, you know, what are, are they doing something wrong? Are they doing something right? You know, what, what can, what's the problem? I just, you know, and so we kind of touch on that a little bit in the book, you know, and, and, and I know for a fact that as women, you know, when we grow up as far as like, even when we start from eight to 10 years old, we're thinking about our wedding. You know, we're thinking about what we want to wear, how we want our wedding to be and, you know, things like that. Whereas men, they don't think about that. That's not something that they talk about, you know? So I just kind of want to know from a man's perspective, Derek, what is your, I mean, why do you think that percentage is so high um, of single ladies? You know, that's, um, that's a good question. I think you kind of hit it when you talked about, you know, how we are, we raised differently. You know, boys are typically raised to, you know, be, you know, masculine and play sports and, um, kind of live what would be deemed more of a single lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't play with dolls, yeah. you know, um, you know, we play with trucks and cars and, um, we play more team things together with other males. We interact with them. And so there's just not that big foundation for relationships. It, it really is. And then you talk about eight to 10. So I was trying to think, you know, when, you know, I really start thinking about, you know, seriously thinking about relationships. There's no doubt we think about girls. You know? <laughs> but yeah, you know, That's because I, 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 yeah. I remember, you know, my cousin's boys coming up, you know, the uncles, like, you know, 14, how many girlfriends you got? You know, and so, you know, at that age, the men are asking them, they setting them up for that stage to have a yeah. bunch of girlfriends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, though, I think when you start looking at numbers, um, you know, I, I start out with, you know, I have four daughters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a concern for me. You know, how are they going to find mates and husbands and things like that? And and I always tell them, you know, it's you just need one. Yeah. And, you know, and men have to get that mentality that you need one. Now, of course, that doesn't answer the question for the other three women that may <laughs> may end up without a guy. But I really think that there's a um, there's a lid for every pot, you know, mm -hmm. so you just have to, you know, to be due diligent in looking and not really like just just jumping out there for anything. Boys are definitely are always, you know, on that um I guess, you know, looking for the right female too. And I think for most of our lives, we spend it trying to find the perfect person mm -hmm. that don't exist. Mm -hmm. I call it the 90, 10 percent rule. I say you, you have to trust your person or want somebody to have at least 90% of what you want. And the other 10% is the human side. Cause we are all human. That's right. And so you are not going to get the, 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 fair, the perfect deer, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it just don't exist. Right. You would be fooling yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And the same with women, you're not going to get the perfect, you know, man, you know, give that 10% for him to have that human side to him. But I honestly believe if you want a man and you want a woman and you really honestly believe that both in your heart and, and you put out that vibe, you will find that, that person, and, you know, it, it might not be a hundred percent, but I do believe there's a woman, there's a man for everyone. Period. Denisha, yeah. What's your take on 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 that? On why we have so many single ladies? Yes. Personally, I would say um, for myself, it's a choice because of the stage that I'm I am in in my life. Now, you know, being young, you don't know what you want, what you like, what you need. Burn. So you just out there picking. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, what your interests are. But I think that at my age now, I have a better understanding of what I don't want for sure. Okay. And then leaning more into God mm -hmm. and him showing me more of who he is and who I am in him. I, it's a choice right now because I choose not to just pick. So would you say that for you... 
you feel like you know yourself more. You took the time to know you more. Yes. And yeah. so with that thought in mind, now you really know what will work for you. Yes, absolutely. So do you believe what he said, that there's a lid for every pot? Yes, and I'm weak. Okay. Are you simmering something in that pot while you're waiting? I'm actually not pursuing at okay. this moment. I actually got off of all my, you know, social media because I felt like I needed to work on me first. Because right. I wasn't ready. I wanted it, but I was like, I don't think I'm really ready because I do have some things that I need to work on that I believe okay. God was showing me. I stepped away from actually pursuing it at, you know, being on the dating site. So at right now, no, but I, I do want it. Okay. Desire. <laughs> All right. Well, you kind of answered one of my questions, which was going to be, why are you single today? So I'm going to turn that back around to you, Derek. Why are you, why do you feel like you're single at this point in time in your life? I think that I've gotten so used to the single lifestyle. It's hard to make that adjustment. Um, I certainly have met and probably have dated what could be deemed to be my second marriage because I have been married before. Uh, but I don't think I was ready. And it's, and you know, so I knew that for me, honestly, um, I couldn't give up what I had gotten accustomed to and my singleness mm. and uh and that's you know and that part of that is being selfish you know I knew you know you know how I move I knew what I needed what I'd like to do where I was at in my career and that didn't include being a husband it didn't include being and I want to be a husband I don't want to be in a relationship with you I want to be that husband and so that that's that's important I wasn't ready to be a husband. I'm gonna uh go ahead and bring According to the the last, your last answer, I want to know. So, has being single what being sing, what has being single taught you about yourself? Hmm, that's a good question. That I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. that, that's the that you wasn't thing. ready. That I'm not ready. Well, I, I I'm gonna say this. Um, I wasn't ready, but I feel like I I've grown a lot, so I know that I'm being prepared. Mm. But at the same time, I know that I also have some things that I need to work on in order for someone to come into my space, just like what Derek was saying. I've been single a long time. So allowing someone into your space, that's different. Because you move how you want to move. Like you said, you're doing things on your own. Mm -hmm. So it's it's preparing. I'm preparing myself. Adjustment. To, right to be able and to be open for it. So when it does come, I'm not going to just shut that door. But I'm not, like I said earlier, searching, but I'm open. Okay. Derek, mm -hmm. what, has, what has being single taught you about yourself? Honestly, I think for me, I learned how to forgive myself. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> that was um, hard, you know, yeah. we, you know, just being transparent and we sitting here talking about men and you know, I, I have been in relationships that I knew I shouldn't have been in, right. you know, and uh, so being single has taught me how to be still, you know, and really learn how to be disciplined and then forgive myself because I, I, I think internally I wasn't happy um, with me and the choices I had made and some of the things I had done. And so being single taught me how to forgive myself really forgive myself and really understand now when you're going to be in a relationship, you know, this is who you really need to be. And this is how it needs to work. Right. And I honestly, I thank God for that because, you know, he's really, you know, really just taken over and the dare in this relationship now is nothing like the dare that was in previous relationships. Awesome. So, so alarming yourself that grace that mm -hmm. you show other people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's powerful. Okay. co house. So what, 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 no, I, I understand. So he's speaking to me too. I understand it because, uh, yeah. So what has it, what, what has being single taught you about women? That I have to be careful how I connect with them. Mm. I tell guys all the time, you know, if you, 
if you treat her like your girlfriend and you taking her around your family and you, it doesn't matter what title you give her to her. She's your girlfriend. Right. I mean, I that, that yeah, that's well. the hard way because I've been a lot of times and I don't want to be the spokesperson for all men, but I'm going to say, Derek, I felt like I could, I could take you around my family. I could do this, but we're not dating. Uh huh. We're not. And that's wrong. I, thoroughly knew, realized that I'm making a mistake. This woman is thinking that she's my girlfriend. And my daughters always ask me. And then, you know, of course, once they grew up and they understand that, they're saying, does she know she's not your girlfriend? I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah. You have to almost ask that when someone kind of comes to you and wants to, okay, and they say they're single, does anybody else believe? Right that right. y'all are in a relationship. Right. You may be saying you're single, right. but is there somebody out there that believes y'all right. are a couple? Right. You know, somebody might be. Right. Yes. Right. You know? So it's yeah. taught me that, you know, yeah. when we, if you know, we, I call it the three date rule. Mm -hmm. We go on three dates, you my girlfriend. <laughs> and we both have a conversation. We, we dating, you, you know, we working towards that because I don't want to leave that not discussed right. that I had in the past. Right. A lot of guys do because yeah. we think that, you know, we, if we didn't say it and we didn't, it's not official, mm -hmm. but it is official. Yeah. It really is official. So, you know, it's just like Texas. I learned being here in Texas that, you know, if you live with somebody, that common law is brain. It's real. It's real. You know, yeah. so, you know, you have to have that mentality. I'm either we all in or, you know, or we don't make sure that that's we defining where we right. are and where we go. Exactly. I so. totally agree with that because mm -hmm. I know a lot of a lot of men that don't do that. And then when they don't do it, they get caught up. You know, they get caught up because now you got this woman that's hurt and you don't understand why. Mm -hmm. But it's because you did, you you didn't have that conversation. You, you know, it's all about, you know, having that conversation. And like you said, defining what it is, defining what you want and what you want it to be. And it goes back to women. We are emotional creatures. We lead with our hearts, you know, and when we feel like we got somebody that's paying us all that great attention, the things we're looking for, you know, some women, they already down the aisle, mm -hmm. you know, before date number three, yeah. you know, they've already started writing their name with your last name attached to it. Like we used to do back in the day, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I like, I like that you, you said that that's big. So it, that kind of leads me into what I, we were going to ask about, you know, do you date intentionally now or are you I dating? I went, I went to ask to know what, what being single has taught you about a man. All right. Okay. What single has taught me about about men? You know, just about ooh, come on. I guess maybe be cautious listening to like kind of like what he said, listening to what they're actually saying and how they're moving forward. So that I don't take my own perspective, we like, like he said, we go together. <laughs> Real bad. <laughs> Not really picked out my dress, you know? So just being mindful of a man showing me his, his words match. Actually, nice. his action. Yeah. His words match. Okay. So, all right. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. That I can't, that kind of answered the question. You know, it sounds like you're dating with intention, or are you right now just dating because you want to date? You know, you're dating for relationship, relationship or the sex? You dating for what? What is your end goal? I'm not dating at the moment, but well, then time date, so, would you? Yeah. Oh, I'm dating because I'm I'm my husband. I want marriage, not just to be dating. Like that's the end. My like, my part. Yeah. And Derek, what about you? And then how do you decipher that? I guess it just depends on the person. Or when you meet somebody, uh, would you just not talk to somebody if you know that 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 you're not going to be dating that person for what you're looking for? Or do you lead with that? Are you when you meet someone? Are how soon are you telling them? Denisha, that you know, I'm looking for my husband, or do you take the time to get the note him first? I don't think it would be the first conversation, but it would be a upfront conversation. Like it doesn't have to be the first date, but 
depending on the first date, then if I feel that like connection to that person, then it would be a cop. Okay. That's good. Uh, I think for me, dating has evolved. It evolved. And I started out, you know, just dating, just thinking again, like I said earlier, we're just going on a date. But maturity has taught me that it has to have an end game. It has to have some goal. Um, and that could be different, but I think whatever it is, it's something that I want me and my partner to agree to. So we both know that we're on the same path. I'm, you know, if, if my end game is for us to date and now specifically would be to marry. Oh, I was just sharing with somebody the other day, the next person I date, we are getting married, you know, and I don't know that it's going to take long, you know, because I think we started understanding that when we first meet. You know, we start. So do you believe in um, people having timelines? You know, like some people will start and date and say, well, we got a date for two years before we can, you know, get married. Or we got a date for so long before we can be exclusive or however you want to say that. I honestly, I don't. I think that, you know, it's whatever we agree to. But again, it's going to be that communication. So we Mm -hmm. we on the same page. I don't want date three. And we not on, you know, right. same thing with what we want to do. So I think that comes into really communicating. A lot of times, though, I think, you know, we don't talk. Mm-hmm. And so we just assume. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you 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 got this relationship going and you have it really, you know, really gave it, a, you know, a real definition or direction. Right. You know, I, I know in my job, you know, I'm, I'm in by trade, you know, everything I do has uh, some specific instructions or some specific goal i i don't do that with relationships and i i really should i wish i had it because i think had i done it years ago i would have already been married you know and probably happily married right um, but i didn't i just went into it like you know anything else i'm just dating and we'll see where we go right and i hate that i don't want to know i don't want us to just have to let it go and go right. i want us mm-hmm. to be able to say you know are you, are you interested in a husband you know are you interested right. in being a wife um, because I'm preparing myself to be a husband. I hope that that's, you know, what, what you have planned. And then we can just kind of work the timeline. I don't think it's going to take be at least for me, not long at all. You know, I'm going to work with my partner, but you know, I don't want to set a goal of, you know, we got to be married in two years. Yeah. It's probably be, you know, I think less than a year for me, but you know, again, whatever my partner wants. Okay. That is good guys. So for you, I'm going to start with you, Derek. What does a successful relationship, what does it look like for you at this point? I know you said that 90%, what's like that, those top qualities that you're going to be looking for in those first three dates, as you said, to say, okay, she's the one, you know, what, what does she have to bring to the table for a successful relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I started out, you know, we started talking about, you know, the foundation of kids and how girls are raised and boys are raised. Um, and so to me, you know, I, I think that women definitely have that advantage where they're more prepared. So a successful marriage or relationship to me would be where um, we have created our own vision together. I'm a spiritual person, so I really believe in, you know, looking at how we can grow together spiritually so we we go into the same church. You know, we're hearing the same message. We're talking about it and maybe some differences in how I saw it and you saw it, but we're talking about it and we're building our vision together. Mm-hmm. My favorite, one of my favorite stories, and I ask women this all the time when I, you know, first meet them to kind of gauge whether this might be something potential. Um, you know, I used to talk about Proverbs 31. Oh, uh, what does yeah. that mean to you? Um, but but recently I started really getting into the story of Ruth and Naomi. Mm-hmm. Because to me, a perfect marriage or relationship is that I want a woman that's going to say, you know what? Your God is my God. Mm. You know, your, your friends are my friends. Yes. Your enemies are my enemies. You know, so we are just connected yes. like that. And I know that's hard and that may be raising the bar really high, but I really believe that my, my soulmate will be like that. And I will be the same way for her. Right. And so I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be where you at, you know, I want us to be there together, you know, even with our differences so that, you know, we'll have that opportunity to be 
a good, strong marriage, a good, strong relationship. And I do think it starts out with a good spiritual foundation mm-hmm. and being on the same page with that. I've been married when I was not evenly yoked. And, um, wow. and I think that probably was probably one of the biggest things that led to the demise of my, my relationship because I saw, you know, where God was taking me and my spouse didn't even believe in that. And so it was just totally different. I want a partner that has that same, we hear the same word, we, we talking about it and we build it. Um, yeah, because you know that's where we headed over yeah. to you now uh, yeah what does it look like to you um i totally agree foundation has to be god for for me as well my husband has to be um one thing though for sure is coming together like you and your partner making that decision I don't like when people, when I hear people say that's relationship goals, you don't know how their relationship actually goes. You see these pictures and on social media, and you see how people, you know, they post all the good stuff, the uh-huh. highlights. Uh-huh. I don't want to have somebody else as my relationship goal. I want to be my own relationship. Goal. Like, so for me, it's myself and my partner coming up with what's going to work for us. Like okay. in, in our partnership, I don't, I don't want to look at nobody. You want to write y'all a story. Okay. Yeah. So that goes to speaking of social media. You know, do you think social media has had an impact on relationships nowadays? And dating. Yeah, and dating. And, and if so, is it a positive impact or in a negative way? I think it can be both. Um, it can be good because when you're like personally for myself, y'all know I don't really go a whole lot of places. I'm pretty much a homebody. So meeting people, I've met some awesome people and on social media or dating sites. So that part of it to me is good. helpful. Yeah. I think that, like I said earlier, when people start posting just the good stuff or when you have a mate that's so caught up into social media, that can form your relationship. If they're always on it, or mm-hmm. y'all don't have that type of connection where you know yeah. one is always on social media, yeah. one's not, and not on social media. That can cause some issues. But I think it can be a pipe of it. And uh, there, your thoughts? Totally agree. I think that uh, so social media gives access to you um and depending on where you at in your relationship uh, you need to understand how you should approach that for example um you know i have access to people that you know i don't see on a regular basis or they have access to me through the social media um if if i was to be if i was getting married certain people couldn't have access to me and it may even mean not even doing social media at all because you know i want to respect my marriage and my partner and i know that that social media just opens up that access that people can contact you that you know you really don't need to have that that contact with anymore certainly there's a lot of good things about um, social media and being able to, you know, um, track and, and keep up with, but I really think people let you see what's on the outside of their house. They, you really not see seeing what's, what's on the inside. And so, yeah. and so you know, you have to keep that in perspective. You know, it's mm-hmm. probably a lot of things going on, the same things that we deal with every day right. that they're dealing with. You just mm-hmm. don't, don't see it on social media. Right. So for me, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want people to have access to me while I'm in a relationship. I could post on there that Mary, and you know and be done with it Mm -hmm. i don't want you to be able to come on there and even you know have an opportunity to engage with me in any conversation my partner same way i wouldn't want certain individuals that from her past to be able to have access to her Uh, and i don't think it's about being insecure i just think it's about respect and being able to move on because i know i'm not going to engage in any activity with you but you still could be reaching out to me there, right. you know, would be no way to really limit it unless, you know, I'm blocking you or taking, getting off social media. So I just think when you're not in a relationship, maybe it's okay. Um, but in a real serious, committed relationship, my, my spouse is all the social attention I need. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it. No, it's happening. No. 
that kind of leads me down to a path of wanting to ask you both, what are your deal breakers? What are the, What is one deal breaker that for you is not is not negotiable as far as who you're dating? I think for me, my main thing is uh, my husband being Christian. Okay. We have to have the same vibration. And that's a that's a deal breaker for that, you. That's I'll, because I've done it in the past. Mm-hmm. I tried to negotiate things in my mind, like it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. Ha- even having communication with a person, asking them, you know, what do you think about this? And as long as we communicate say but I found that for me because I am and I'm in tune uh-huh. like my spirit and I listen I get convicted like so for me it's like no that's not what I have for you so when I decided okay God I'm gonna follow you it's okay so there's no more going back and forth with myself like Oh, it'll work or you know telling myself a lie what if you meet what if you meet a christian and they they snore a lot and and you don't like people that snore so <laughs> i don't work that out <laughs> 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 like, you know, they, they, they might you know they might dress funny you don't like the way they dress so uh, should you work that out that's a good question but <laughs> And you know, we, we when we were younger, that dress thing was real. The tennis shoes, and like, you know, like, you would look at a guy's shoes and all of that. But yeah. the snoring, um, I mean, just that, any, just anything, you know, like the little twerks. That, yeah, you know, I that, think that, that when I have the person, I'm gonna be graced for that person. No, oh. like I'm not gonna be caught up in all the little quirks. <laughs> I don't think I, I'm. So you're just gonna give them one of them snoring pillows that are warm, but <laughs> help you place an Amazon order. Then you know, yeah. hey, give me an idea or try this when they sleep or something. You know, this <laughs> under. Yeah, no, but I don't think that. I don't think that I will have that problem though. Okay, I, I want to dig back into the Christian aspect okay so you said that's a non-negotiable non-negotiable but i just want to ask okay so what if you meet someone who has a willing heart and wants to become a christian and and what needs that person to just kind of be that help them build that foundation is that something you're open to or do they already have to have that walk with god already established that's a good question um honestly I'm not sure, but I will say this. Um, I would definitely pray about that. Mm -hmm. And I would ask God to lead me in that because I think that in the past I've done things in that aspect, Mm -hmm. but that wasn't what God wanted me there for. Like taking on that and that person being someone that I could see as a mate versus Mm -hmm. That wasn't the purpose of him sending me that person, but the purpose might have been to for help me to him. introduce that person to him. So I would say first I would pray about that because again, if that's my person, then he'll show me how to move forward in that. All right. Okay, Denisha. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Derek, what you gonna break? <laughs> that's that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think as the man, though, you know, m- men should lead in relationships mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, one faith base. Uh, I mm-hmm. think it's really important. Um, you know, I know, I don't know what the word or the term submissive means to you guys in here, but I really want my spouse to, you know, follow my lead in that, you know, and my lead is through Christ. Mm-hmm. And so if she's not, 
a Christian, I think that, you know, um, God will touch her and speak to her heart. And if she loves me, she has to love God because mm. she's going to see nothing but that. So she won't see me. She'll see him. Ooh. And the person she's falling in love with is God. Come and, on, you know, I'm just the, I'm just the, the vessel. So, so I really believe, but it's important. Don't get me wrong. It's right. not, it, right. you know, I, I could not be married to um, an atheist um, or somebody that didn't believe. So I think to love me would be to love God. And, and so just follow my lead. And I think that, you know, um, that she would uh, definitely get more involved with, with, you know, with, with church and wanting to have that personal relationship because I, I get tired, you know, men get tired, you know, and that's one of the things we don't talk about a lot though, mm-hmm. but I need a partner that when I'm tired, you can pick it up and you praying for this family and you, you're doing the same thing that I would be doing. Not that you're taking over it or that it's, you know, out of place. But I need you, you know, they say with two or more walk together, if one mm-hmm. falls, the other right. one can pick them up. Right. So, you know, help help me. Help me be a better husband. Help me be a better uh, walk with my relationship with Christ. And I think that to love me again, like I said, would be to love you. So That's awesome. Yeah. Mic drop. Because I really, I really, I have seen instances where guys, you know, they know that this person may not be the person for them, mm-hmm. but then they overlook that because that person got a nice body. That person, look, you know, just go- drop dead gorgeous, and that person is just all of that, all of the physical attributes mm-hmm. that they desire in a woman, but they don't have that other side to it. But yet, and still, they still try to go into it for that reason. And I've seen a lot of relationships fail for that reason. Mm-hmm. So, how would you, how would you handle that, Derek? If if you had somebody that you know, of course, we all have our things that we're physically attracted to. So you you run across somebody that's got everything that you're physically attracted to. But like Katrice said, they aren't there yet. They trying to get to that wall, you know. And as as you said, the man and being a leader, you know, how would you approach that situation? You know, and then because they may say, hey, yeah, you know, I'm trying my best to get to this walk. But then you get deeper into the relationship and then, you know, they kind of fall off the wayside a little bit. Well, yeah, I think, you know, that's part of that um, that time, that dating time mm-hmm. um, that, you know, that you spend it with them. And, you know, when somebody tells you who they are, but- I don't care how they look, you need to believe, them, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and so you have to, you know, and, and I think for me, you know, I mean, I could lead you. I don't want to use church or us having Bible study as a date time because that's <laughs> our time with him. Yeah. And it should be personal to you. If you ever come to church with me, anybody that's ever gone to church with me said, I don't think you even saw me the whole service. And they're sitting right next to me because my relationship mm-hmm. is vertical. I'm I'm here and I'm not here, you know, mm-hmm. and I want somebody that's going to be like that, too. And I'm not saying you have to be a Bible thumper. I just want you to believe. I want mm-hmm. you to, you know, you know, trust because I mean, that's, that's, that, that's who I am. We, we can't make anything. Our marriage with cannot survive without having that, that trust and the belief in him. And like I said earlier, you know, what, what, what happens when, you know, I, you know, I'm tested. What happens when, you know, I'm, I'm a little weary and I come in, you know, I want I want, I want you to be able to pray for me. Or better yet, when our relationship is being tested, mm-hmm. because it's going to be tested, yeah, definitely. you know, and I need a, I, ne- I need you to be able to say, you know what, that, let, let's see what the word says about this. You know, and remember, I said earlier about that 10 percent, you know, Derek, Derek has that 10 percent human. So, you know, um, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't do or say that I used to do. But let me get tired or let me get, you know angry enough I might I might speak in tongues in a net language that <laughs> don't require the interpreting you know and I don't want to use those words but you know it, it could come out you know mm-hmm. and so you know allow for that 10% but mm-hmm. you know we have to be we got to be spiritually connected and grounded that that's that's the only way because I'm, I'm dealing with somebody that you know is totally different from me yeah. so I have to rely on God to say hey you sent me this woman. You created woman to live with me. So help me, help me. Out, you know? let's, let's do this. Help me, help you. I have a good So everything has to be, you know, trust and belief. And, yeah. And so, in dating, if she's not there and she's not getting there, it, it, you know, that would be a non negotiable It wouldn't. It couldn't happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Wow. Me. That was. I want to make it a little bit lighter because we, we got heavy right there. <laughs> got deep. I want to know if each of you guys could tell us about your most challenging or funniest date that you've experienced. Can I go first on that one? <laughs> I feel she on this one. I'm waiting on this one because I have one date that stood out. Uh, you know, you you think you've experienced everything, you know, and it's like nothing really surprised me. Uh, I'm not going to even. I I try not to. I will be neutral so that it, it, nobody would ever know who I'm talking about. But anyway, since I moved to Texas, uh-huh. um, well, you'd already told the state. I know. I say it till the second. Yeah, Texas is big, but it's a big state. It is a big state. But uh, a coworker introduced me at a Christmas party to one of her friends, and uh, I wasn't interested at, at all. But somehow, between the, the the beginning of the party and the end of the Christmas party, we exchanged information. And to tell you how much I wasn't interested, I gave her my work number. Ooh. And the only reason I gave her my work number is because I only had my business card. And so I gave her a business card and it had my work number. And typically, if I'm really interested, I'm not going to give you a business card, you know, because this is not business. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you my number. We go. Right. I gave her the business card. And so from like the mid-December to the end of December, our company is shut down. So my business phone was cut off. Oh. And this person had been reaching out to me. And so no connection until January when, when, when we started back up. I turned my phone on. I was like, oh, wow. Got a couple messages. And so I did reach out. Long story short, we went on date one. Date one was fine, good time, getting to know each other, talking, Mm -hmm. you know, really healthy. Date two was good. You know, again, more, we went to an an event where we could talk a little bit more, more, more intimate, close conversations. You know, both of us have been divorced. Date three, I wanted it to be special because remember I said day three, I was getting ready to say the tension building yeah, here. We got to get going. So and seeing <laughs> that this might have some potential. So I set up a private studio for paint, sip and paint. And it was just me and her, nobody wow. else in the class. So she got to paint her picture. I got to paint mine. We had a bottle of wine. We had the instructor. So it's one-on-one. And the conversation went from just, you know, just real general stuff to my divorce and really wanting to know, you know, why you got divorced. Now, I've been divorced for almost 20 years. So, you know, it, I mean, it's not something I even talk about. It's not a conversation, but I, I, I indulged with her and I did share with her. But I could tell after a while that was just the focus and it was really t- starting to irritate me. So I said, let's just change the focus. Of doing, and, mm-hmm. and she said to me, and this is where it went south. My male friend told me if you wouldn't talk about your divorce, then something's wrong. And so for me, and now I'm thinking, okay, I said, well, whoever told you that, that's who you should be here with. <laughs> and so now it's time for the date to end. So we were did getting ready to finish the painting at least. We did finish the painting. <laughs> and that's the other punch card. We did finish the painting. And uh, I, it was cold. So I pulled the car up to pick her up because I, you know, I had drove. And as I was driving back to her house, I noticed we wasn't talking at all. So mm. I tried to break the ice. Hey, you know. At least tell me where to turn. She wouldn't give me any directions. So now I got to put the GPS up because I don't know if I get to her house. Oh, so now you Uber. Well, Nia, now I'm Uber. <laughs> yeah, we, for, by the time I got to her street, true story, I'm still driving and I had slowed the car down because I'm trying to look to see which house is hers because I've only been there one time that day to pick her up. So I'd never, she opened my car door and jumped out while I was still moving. What? I stopped my car. Now, I wish I would have known she was going to jump out because I would have been going faster. <laughs> but I didn't know that. I was slowing down to see which, you know, which house. She jumped out while I was still moving. My door still open. I'm like, I stopped my car. I took her painting that she had is still in my car, and I just set it out on the curb, <laughs> shut my door, and went home. And that's the last I ever saw her. Wow. Well, I'm glad you wasn't driving fast because I don't want you to catch no case. No. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. Wow. I would call. I've never had anybody. You know, you're jumping out of a moving car. That's... I wasn't stopped. I'm like, you just jump out? Okay. But anyway. But, yeah, that's you know. crazy. You know, because I, I hate that because I hear oh, some stories as well where women get information from other people. And then somebody, when you get an inf- outside information from other people, that can very much deter what you're trying to focus on, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and then you can, you can, you know, probably miss out on a great opportunity because you're listening to what 
outside people, you know, in your ear and what they telling you. And, you know, uh, that's. Yeah. I honestly, what I learned though, is that, you know, a conversation can go south Sideways. real quick. Yeah. It's an idea cuts. So, you know, you're thinking we're in a studio yeah. and we're painting and it's just us and we're, you know, have a good time. And I don't know. I'm like, how did we get to this? And, you know, and of course, I know at that point I was irritated. I was because, you know, it's like, OK, you know, I ain't been married in 20 years. You still want to know, you know, what what the relationship was like and why we got divorced. You know, I've given you all of my yeah. what I can recall. But I want to talk right. about us. Right. You know, right. What are we going to do? What are we yeah. doing here? This yeah. Is day three. I'm like, you know, we're <laughs> four, you know, so. But. The better. Let me see. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, that's crazy. Wow. I almost hate to ask you to come by and that with Denisha. You got one for us. I was talking to Stacy about dating. Uh huh. And I was telling her that I went on dates when I moved to Texas. Uh huh. So that says a lot about, remember when I said my choosing, you know, when I was younger was not good. We didn't go on dates. So when I moved to Texas is when I went on my first actual dates. Really? So the only thing that came to mind actually last night was when one guy took me out and we went bowling and we had fun. We really had fun conversation, good. But then this fool thought I was coming home with him. <laughs> so that was like the only thing I could think of that was like kind of bad. Cause I'm like, just because you take me on a date, <laughs> we <laughs> about to go to you. <laughs> and the crazy part is he was trying to be really um, aggressive? aggressive about it. Wow. Like, yes, you are. <gasps> First of all, you don't know. You should have been jumping out the door, man. Hey, no, we were still, we were actually yeah. still in the, the ball. Okay, in the ball now. So he was telling me, you know, he wanted me. I'm like, no, that's that that doesn't work that way. And he was like, yes, you are. Like, you, you don't know me. You, you don't know me like that. So at that moment, you know, I'm kind of like what you said earlier. <laughs> when Louis, I'm about to come out. No, I'm not. Okay. And I got in my car and I went. Well, it's a. Oh, oh. that was my next question. I was gonna say, please tell me you had. No, I, whoa, oh, I don't. I, I don't do. I don't. I, don't, I haven't done that. I mean, yeah. I haven't had a pickup date. So thank God. Yeah, I got in my car and I went home. It's wow. like, so crazy. <laughs> yes, you are. He was like trying to be really like no, because you about to you about to meet the other side of me real quick. Tell me, do I need to pull up? <laughs> hey, where you at? Kyle? Oh, I make a phone call. Right. You don't know my family, though. You better bring that down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they don't play about me now. <laughs> so, yeah, that was what I thought of when I was uh, laying in the bed. I was like, oh, wait, I didn't go. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm still waiting to be courted. I love you. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Still yes. You you hold out for that. Oh, I yes. Am. Yes. I am. Every woman should be courted. Yes. 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 Absolutely. So I want to know, like, what are some myths mm. about dating that you find to be true or untrue? Derek, let you go with that one because I don't know about that one. Well, you guys, you, you brought it up earlier that there's more women mm -hmm. than there are men. Mm -hmm. that was um, and I do find that to be true, but I think it's equally hard to find that right person. Yeah. Right. You know, so numbers don't give you an advantage in that sense. Mm -hmm. It's to me, it's just probably more headache, more drama. I, you know, look at that sometimes because I was telling somebody, when I go shopping, I know what I want. I can go to one store and I can get it. I'm looking for a white shirt to go with the suit. I go to Macy's, I find a white shirt. I don't have to go in Dillard's. I don't have to go in other place. Sometimes with dating, you have to go in other places or you have to go through the whole rack because mm -hmm. you're not going to find that one white shirt the first outing. You're going to yeah. have to go through that. And so... Yeah, the, the, there are more numbers, mm -hmm. but more numbers 
means more dates or more people, you know, jumping out my car, mm. you know, the potential, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, um, so, you know, so that's why I was saying that, you know, there is a, you know, live for every pot and sometimes yeah. it might just be aluminum foil. <laughs> you, so you, uh, uh, you, 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 I can't, I, I, I'd also leave that there's, I'm just called fine, like, uh, <laughs> Uh, because I have numbers in my favor. Now y'all got quick laugh. That was good. The, the, you know, so the, the four to one odds, because guys will say that all the time. Man, go to, you been to Atlanta? Atlanta is six to one. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying it's six to one, but you ain't got nobody. If it's six to one, where is it? Where, where is she at? Where, you know, so I, I think that, that that number game is a myth in terms of, you're gonna have a better advantage. It yeah. may mean mm-hmm. you get you see more. Yeah. But you coming to get I'm I'm not looking for six women. You Look, know, I love that analogy you gave on the white shirt the though. Quality is what I mean, mm-hmm. even though the even though the, the quantity may be there, mm-hmm. you don't have that quality. Mm-hmm. Or the fact that you go you find the shirt at Macy's, but you go to dealers to make sure that shirt is the best one, you know, so you're adding, you know, you want, you're not satisfied right. mm, with the first shirt. The first. You just got to go to a few other stores to make sure, am I getting the best right. deal here? Is this the best shirt? Yeah. And then you're adding the numbers right. to the pot versus, and no, that first shirt, uh-huh. it fit me, it was the right price. Right. But you know, I think that can serve in a negative way because I think in my head, I think that that's how guys think. I think a guy will go in Macy's and even though that white shirt is the perfect they said, shirt. Maybe there's a better right. one. Let me go see if there's that's a better what I'm saying. at Dillard. That's what I'm saying. And then you go to Dillard's and then you be like, dude, man, let me go over here and see if I can find a better shirt. And and like like when you get back to we get you, that little shirt, it's gone. As, yes. That first Come on, shirt that's Macy's. Oh. It's gone. It's it's gone. The yeah. Yeah. And that was the best shirt. But you passed it up because you're trying to go see what's in there. That is very true. Like, I just, that's, that's, very very, that, that's a male perspective. Yeah. That's right. They do. Right. So that's why I said the numbers. want to get something those, right now. Those, that was good. Those uh, numbers, <laughs> yeah. three to one, is a myth. Yeah. You know, I like you, that. you might find that right one mm-hmm. and you don't need to see the other three. Right. You know, the other four or five yeah. or whatever it is. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I want to know, you know, Derek, since you've been divorced, why do you think the divorce rate is so high right now at this time? Because I know times have changed. People are different now. Things are different. So, I mean, I know back in the day, you know, people did stuff, but the divorce rate was not nowhere near what it is now. So why do you think that has changed so much? What it what and that's a subject that I talk about in the book. Why do you think people are? Because I, I don't go to a lot of weddings anymore. Like I said in the book, I've been to more. I've known more people that have gotten divorced than I've been to weddings. Mm-hmm. So, why is it that the divorce rate is so high and people are not getting married anymore? I think that you know there's a couple reasons. But one, I think, um, I don't know if people believe in forever anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people believe in that, you know, two people can literally commit their lives together forever wow. and to death do in part. So the forever um, is been redefined. Mm-hmm. So ev- forever means <laughs> right. until, you know, until I, I go to the store and I see another white mm-hmm. shirt mm-hmm. and I exactly. think this white mm-hmm. shirt is a better deal. I'm going to take this white shirt yeah. for now until yeah. I can until I get another until I white shirt. I'm going and that, and that, and that, online yeah. and see what I can find later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think some studies, though, have shown if you look at other countries and, you know, mm-hmm. the things that are going on there, even prearranged marriages in like some of the Asian co- countries, um, they last. Mm-hmm. I think because of the focus is that, you know, I, I'm, I'm making, I am saying to you that, mm-hmm. you know, to death do us part. Right. It's the commi- and it's two people, commi- yeah, are saying it, you know, not one. Because in my case of getting divorced, I would still be married today because I didn't want to get divorced. Mm-hmm. And my, my spouse wanted to. Mm-hmm. And then after she got divorced, a couple years after that, and she wanted to come back. I wasn't that same Derek. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, my thing is, you know, we're going to have that 10% of Derek who's going to come out. That 10% of you go come <laughs> yes. out, Patrice. And I, I have to 20%. be a... <laughs> and I got, I got, you. Yeah, I got to be prepared to, you know, manage that. My expectations is not that you're going to be perfect or we're going to have perfect. 
but we mm-hmm. in this just forever. forever. And it's forever. a decision. Yeah. So that thought of divorce never even crossed my mind when I'm not happy with you or you're not happy with me. Mm-hmm. We just going to work this out. And again, right. that's where that faith base and, you know, knowing that, you know, we, God can come in and he can give us some word or we can go to work right. and work it out. But I really think people are not believing in the fact going to their vows and saying it and be thinking maybe this might be a five year. Right. Right. You know, and that's crazy to even think because who, who would do that? If I sign a contract with you to do something and it's legal and binding, right, then. we in it. That's you right. know, we can't we can't even get out of it. But, mm-hmm. you know, marriage is not looked at like that. Yeah, and that's true. Because, I mean, I went to the mailbox a couple of weeks ago and I had an invitation to a divorce party. They are having parties really? now to celebrate mm-hmm. getting the divorce. I said, I will not go. I will not go help you. Mm-hmm celebrate that you know and it's that mindset of mm-hmm. that's over that's party i'm like wow things have really I've changed. changed i'm i've heard of that too. yeah that as well yeah what is your what are your what are your takes denisha on that subject like why do you i'm in my mind i'm thinking commitment communication and some people just shouldn't have never got married so i would say commitment because like Derek was saying, that's just not their mindset. Divorce is on the table when they get married. Mm. So communication, they're not communicating. So you don't even know that you and your partner is more than likely kind of growing apart. So y'all not in the same mindset or have the same goals in mind for your marriage. Mm -hmm. And then some people, to me, you knew that wasn't your spouse. To begin with, you knew that wasn't somebody that was aligned with you. So, you know, yeah. we do it anyway. So, yeah. and you know, for me, I think my thought is this. We as women, you know, we tend to want to, because, you know, women got they, they list of what they want. They, they all, of, all the things they want in a man. Mm-hmm. So we tend to want to pick our man when that's not how it's supposed to be, because the man is the one that proposes. So why are you trying to pick your man? You know, I don't think that you should be trying to pick your man. I don't think that you should be making that decision and picking, okay, I want, you know, let me try to, I want to date him. Mm-hmm. Because, let you know, that's not, that's not for you to decide. That's not for you to decide on, you know, based on your, your, your list or whatever, you know, then, then I want to pick him. Because unless you plan on proposing, that happens to you. That, that's why you want to make that privilege now too? Go they were not proposing. That's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. That I is think that's out of order. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, Bible that's says a man that finds a wife. Find a right. good thing, and that's what I'm saying. Why are you trying to pick? You know, because I think that's a mistake of you trying to. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? What you mean by picking? Like, if you, like I said, women have what their likes and what they don't like. Okay. You so know, like their preferences. Yeah, you know okay. what women do. We we got a new yeah. tab. This one we want to and this this and that. Right. We want a right, right. man. We want it. Okay. You know, and and speaking of that, <laughs> I have another ish, a, another subject about that because I feel like this. We all want well physical attractiveness, but do y'all feel like a woman should be sad? Now I'm not judging nobody. I'm not talking about no. But like you talked about Christian. Or it could be something simple as I want a man that's fine. I want a man with a six pack, but you don't even go to the gym. That's a good point. So that's a good point. I feel like you need to be what you want. You know, you can't say that you want this. Yes. But then you ain't even, you know, exactly. you, you're not nowhere near that. You're not even trying to work on it. You want a rich man, <laughs> but you still stuck. Come on. And don't, you know, you, you're just in this position where you don't want to advance yourself. Exactly. You can't, you can't attract what you're not. You need to be, if that's what you want, you need to start working on yourself first. I agree with that. I am, I agree to a certain extent Mm -hmm. because sometimes I think we can have a want of something Mm -hmm. and we can be in the mindset, but we might need to have that person that brings that out in us even more. Okay. Okay. Can you uh, say that? elaborate a little bit? I'm sorry. It's- okay, I'll go back to, you said you want somebody who's fine, but you're not in the gym. Mm-hmm. I agree 
to a certain extent that you should have an attempt, but it could be in your mind and you might just need that partner like motivation. that brings that mm -hmm. motivation and inspiration because that's what you need. You need that push. But I'm saying if you just a couch potato. No, if you ain't, yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm yeah. Like not doing nothing. You're not, you just sitting on a couch looking at a yeah. picture and be. You gotta now, you gotta have <laughs> a plant. <laughs> it has to be planted somewhere. I agree with that. Exactly. Yeah. You can't just say that that's what you want. You ain't but what I have found yeah. is God will lead you in a whole different direction than what you have on that piece of paper or yeah, what absolutely. you say absolutely. you really want. You know? Absolutely. So I've been there, been there. Yeah. So I had to give up my list a long time ago. That list was not serving me. It just really wasn't. But, you know, I understand exactly what you're saying. You know, we do have a thought in our mm -hmm. head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think we also have to remember that it's what God said. Not necessarily what we say all the time. And I speak. Yeah, please. So for me, I agree with that. You say what God says. So if you're in God, you're really listening uh -huh. from your core, from your relationship, your spirit, and you hear him, he's going to speak to you. Your desires are going to change anyway. There you go. Because that's how I feel I am. Like a person who approached me years ago, you have no time on day today. Because for like I said, you have to have a found that foundation first before mm -hmm. that wasn't even like in my mind that way yes I would bring it up but it wasn't like no no other choice so I believe that when you have that relationship your desires will change the or first line. day he will give you the desires of so your heart but if you're in him then your desires will match him so I agree with that. So yeah, that's why I want his desires. That's why I know my desires change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I used to have this, <laughs> oh, he got to be six foot such and such. Right. But that's not what mm -hmm. God had him so, you know? And yeah. so we could miss out on a lot of blessings right. if we're not willing to. Right open that up a little bit yes yeah. yeah i agree with that my pastor reminds me I, you know i always say we have a big singles ministry and most churches have a lot of women no doubt and uh, i don't do singles mm -hmm. ministry i just feel like it's too much of trying to be a hookup or trying mm -hmm. to make it happen more yeah. on the women's, women's side than the men because you know i could go to a bowling outing with the the what, singles group and be going to bowl mm -hmm. but i feel like if i'm going that I'm being looked at as a potential you, mate, and I could be wrong, right? God right. Think I think you're on the right track, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but my pastor reminds me, he was saying, just, just be mindful that you can find a ram in a bush. Oh. So, you know, so yes, you might not want to do the singles thing. It might be one of the events we do that you just decide to come and go. Mm -hmm. Um. And I just said, you know, I'll pray over it, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, mm -hmm. but if I meet her at Kroger's, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, I know, don't <laughs> yeah. have to be, at don't have to be at the singles event because, you know, I yeah. feel like people are looking and I don't, I don't want that. May I speak on something? Yes. So like what he just said about how, when you do go to events and a lot of women look at that person as a potential, that was me. Oh, so that's why I said earlier about how um, that changed. Yes. When I used the situation like God introducing me, like I'm meeting a guy and my thought process was, oh, this could be, you know, <laughs> and that thought <laughs> automatically goes yeah. there. But but that's not the purpose that he sent me that person. Right. Right. So now everybody is broke. Hey, bro, you my brother in Christ until until that's otherwise. You know, a women, yeah, a lot of women have that mentality. Yes. A lot of women yes. really think that way. Yes. Immediately when they see somebody, they think, yes. okay, is this a potential? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not, I was, not how I was her. Was yeah. guilty. Definitely yeah. not how it should be. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then you setting yourself up for failure, mm -hmm. disappointment, and everything else. And get your feelings hurt. Right. Because he definitely don't think about you in that way. <laughs> yeah. Been done, done that. 
Oh, wow. We're going to need a all the single ladies part two. <laughs> this is so, yeah. so good. This is so good. Well, you know, we, so, so lastly, let's, 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 what, what advice would you have, Derek, would you, what advice would you have for ladies that are out there looking or maybe not even looking, but, you know, let's just give them some advice on, you know, what they should, how they should approach or what they should, um, I, and maybe they don't need to be approaching, but top of mind, what should they be, you know, keeping their spirit or be thinking about as yeah. they, yeah. what should they, what should, or better yet, what, what should they not be doing? Hmm. Yeah. Now I could be real transparent with that one. Um, so I, I'm, I'll just say the first thing is don't give the milk up for free because you, once you cross that line and I know I'm not preaching to just the choir, but, um, that's a point of no return. And, um, uh, you know, for guys, it means something totally different than what it might mean for you. You know, um, see, I, I, I want to date the woman that we're not having sex and I ain't gay. <laughs> I want to put that on the back burner because it's, it has been the, the, in the front so much in the beginning. And I, and I don't want to keep taking the same tests. I want to, I want to pass the class. I'm trying to pass, you know, and, uh, and I'm just being real. That's one reason why I'm where I'm at now, you know, because, you know, some women think I'm gay because I, I haven't gone there. And that's the funniest thing in the world to me. No matter what, if I say, well, I got four daughters, that, that don't mean nothing. That's true. <laughs> I'm just telling you that I'm not gay. Right, right. I'm just choosing not to go there with you. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so th that would be number one. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You know, yeah. and fight your desires and urges. And, and, and he will follow you because the man that really want to be with you, will align with that mm -hmm. it's though uh, even though it's going to be challenging for him and it might be his first time even experiencing that but if he really wants to be with you that's a small piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. you know because that could definitely happen we're going to be intimate here before we're going to be intimate Come physically on, and so let's get to that and get to you know that vision what we want to do together and then that'll happen so i see things in three perspectives passion core values and strengths yeah and what i would tell women is that you know your passion is things that you like to do that we all like to do like i like uh i like talking I do. <laughs> and uh you know uh, my strengths is you know building relationships you know except for the, the long term one that i need but i can build a whole bunch of relationships. <laughs> And then core values come into, you know, my beliefs and, my, and you know, and then yeah. how I look at my family and how I look at women. Right. You know, um, you know, I think that's really important. So for a single woman, I would say, you know, you can find somebody that gets into your passion or may not. That's not a big deal. The strengths. It's kind of nice to have somebody that has opposite strengths than yours, you know, so they can yeah. kind of, you know, kind of meet together and, and complement each right. other. Absolutely. But core values is core values. And yeah. that's where I say, you know, not necessarily non-negotiable, but I would say that's where you want to focus on because you know that how your mama raised you, mm -hmm. you know what your faith base is, um, you know, you know what your family values are, you know, a man that treated your mom real nice or, you know, so that you see you want a man to treat you like that, you know, right, so don't right. settle. So stick to, you know, what your real core values are mm -hmm. and to be mindful of those other two categories. But those are things that you can work with. But don't give up the core values. You know the core values. You know, and I already told you the other part about not giving up. So it, that would that what you said just reminds me of a situation where, and I'm not gonna you know speak on it too much, but I knew somebody that was interested in you. And what did I tell you? That's not for you. I was like that that that's not for you because I know you know where you are and where you're trying to go. And I was like that's not for you. Don't don't even entertain that. So mm -hmm. that 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 just reminded me of that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, the main, I don't know. If I could come behind that. The, I guess the so main what, thing. What, 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 you, you speak on what you would say to a guy. Be intentional. Uh. Don't 
go after her if your intentions are not well. Like, you don't really want that woman. Don't open her up if you're not ready for her. Matter. That's good advice. Keep it from that. Can that, can that, can that, can that advice also be given to females? Don't. How can females not allow themselves to be open? How can they not allow themselves to get in that situation? Because you know we 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 come from a we come from a different aspect than men. We, I think right. We 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 let our feelings get involved. You said it earlier when you were talking about we were, I think we were talking about intentional dating. You were saying you changed and started really not telling your own story, but listening to what was really being said or the yeah, action the actions like your words and your actions lining up and it's like nah that ain't it because if it's not lining up then you lying <laughs> you like you you try to play or you're not real about what you're doing you know you're not being truthful like you're saying one thing with what you're doing or how you moving forward is not aligning up with what you're saying I think so, that you got a honeymoon period, mm -hmm. you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, men are really trying to impress you. Yeah. The representative. You know, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I always say people cannot pretend for long. Oh, so absolutely at least not. Give them time. Like, even if yes. you feel that way at the beginning and you're like, oh, he's doing all of this. Please just give me mm -hmm. some time because that is he going to show up. The real person yeah. is going to show up because yeah. then they, they can't play that role for a long, long period of time right on that third day to get yeah. jumping out of cars <laughs> but to go back to what you were what you asked for ladies for myself particularly i started to really enjoy my singleness mm. like really enjoy it. like just enjoying myself being by myself, taking myself on dates. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I like being by myself now. Like, I don't want to. That's not the end goal. But I love me. Like, now. I love being by myself. I like my quiet time. I like my peace. So, enjoy being by yourself. Enjoy your singleness. And to me, that can go for both men and women. I think we're kind of scared to sit alone because we scared to look in that mirror. Yes. We scared to see that person mm -hmm. looking back at us because we don't, we're not ready to see that person knowing something's going to have to change. That's or right. it's painful, but it's so worth it. And to be transparent, I didn't cry to many of the nights. Like, God, what? I don't do that. I don't like like that. <laughs> but it's it's beautiful because when you get to the place where you can see your growth and you see the change from the person that you was that that's the best thing in the whole world that's why i love it and you know one thing you be asking me like what you doing girl sitting in here chilling <laughs> like i don't mind being in the house mm -hmm. by myself mm -hmm. like i love it and i like going out and i'll go by myself I am a firm believer, though, God did create us to live together. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. When he saw Adam alone, mm -hmm. he said, man, should not be alone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to, you know, happen. It doesn't happen for everybody. But I right. really believe right. that the humans were created to, to live yes. together. Yes. And I would say to women, that. don't make marriage your end game. Okay. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. it the registration for being together a lifetime. Yes. And men have to do the same thing. Yes. So That's the, the beginning. Wife, the, the end game is yes. not to get him to go to right. say I do and get married. The end game is down here saying for the I rest of your life. Tell the rest of your life together. And right. I think that'll slow down the divorce rate and mm -hmm. some of the other things that we talked about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not my end game, but I'm just saying that in this moment, I'm good. But, you know, I talk to God all the time. The, the, I'm good, but this is not where I want to stay. <laughs> like, I'm going to be patient. Patient. And I'm going to be yes. 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 This time, because I told him I'm not picking no more. Like, I'm done. Because my picking were horrible. <laughs> so it's like, I, I get it. Okay. My hand's off. I will allow you to show me who, who that person is. Mm -hmm. So I'm good. 
All right. So I would just say, enjoy your single. This was excellent. Oh, coffee and gumbo, fam. I don't know if y'all was ready for this, <laughs> but we have set y'all up for success here. <laughs> ladies, <laughs> single ladies, put it in the comments. Bring it. Yes. Yeah. This has been some good nuggets for y'all. So, yes. You know, y'all need to take heed, take some lessons, and, you know, Thanks for having Eric and Denisia. Thank you both for gracing us with your presence, with your vulnerability, and sharing your stories. I'm never gonna forget the one about the the car. All right. I'm never <laughs> going to Me. forget it. Me either. <laughs> it is ingrained. No, I didn't make that up. No, no. And um, we just appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. I'm coming on and sharing my birthday with me. Yes. 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 All right. Yes. For my birthday me. special. Yeah. For Violin told him me. Thank you. Aren't you I happy that you got yes, I am. Home. I am. All right. After the, you know, the nervousness went away, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Honestly, I'm the, I'm I'm the lucky one here. Cuz I'm getting three female perspectives uh, and uh-huh. trust me, I'm taking notes too. I love you know, it. I, I love, love it. A lot of the feedback that you gave, mm-hmm. you know, was just right on point and I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I know what's going on. So that helped. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, CNG fam. Well, we gonna catch y'all on the next round. That's right. That's right. You know we gonna bring another state Yes, another flavorful topic coming your way. Oh, I can't talk. Yeah, we coming back. Yes, 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 yes. 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 All right, and and uh, in the link, you will find a link to go ahead and catch and, and grab any with Pop Eddie's book. Yes, so step can, in my shoes. So you can read about the other stories about single ladies. And we will, it's, 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 it'll be very enlightening, um, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. So make sure you pick up a copy. And if you did not see the first um, step in my shoes, a guilty pleasures, we will link it to this video so that you can catch that one as well. Absolutely. So as we always say at the end of the podcast, take care of yourselves. And absolutely. And also take some time out to love on somebody else. That's right. Until the next time. Peace. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching Coffee and Gumbo. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Come back soon for more hot, spicy, and flavorful conversation.